to break Israel after a Kurdish victory just to... Wow. Yeah. Why aren't we doing that? That'd be fancy. <laughs> Ooh, you're dancing. Mm. I'm still dancing. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Now I'm really hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cold here. I hope you guys are staying warm. It's been, we've been waking up to like, what, like low teens? Mm -hmm. Wait, are you drinking coffee? I am drinking coffee. Yeah. I have not been drinking coffee. So now when I drink coffee, I really feel it, which is really fun. But it's also making me a little, a little flushed. So I have um, various states of snow manage here. These I made the other day and I realized that I made them smaller, I think, than these ones. <laughs> yeah. So I have, um, and in the vessel tutorial, we talk a lot about, we do, I say all the sizes, mm -hmm. but let's measure. Those are your, those <clears throat> okay. Are your oh, just. They're like little frisbees. Oh, remember the frisbees? <laughs> Do you remember the frisbees? <laughs> Wait, actual frisbees? Remember? Okay, so we had um, a wire, and I was using a plastic coated, like almost like a foam wire. It was a plastic coated wire. Okay, maybe it was before I knew you because it was Max or Evans like sell at the school thing. Oh. And then, you, so you made it into a circle and just put some electrical tape. And then you took a piece of felted sweater and just stitched it okay. all the way around. And it was like this awesome, awesome indoor frisbee. frisbee. Yeah. Oh, an indoor frisbee. Yes. Nice. Okay. So these little ones, lit, littler, were <clears throat> four and a half, three and a half, and three inch resists. And these bigger ones were, oops, six, <clears throat> five, and four. Um, so I think I'll use the bigger ones again today. So the process is to create your vessels, which we're gonna I'm going to show you how I lay it out from the boodle um, because maybe that's what most of you are using and then wet felt those and um, we might try we did recently acquire a it's called gentle roller it's a wet felting machine from Australia and um, we might throw them in there mm -hmm. now that we know how to do that see what happens mm -hmm. <clears throat> then we can keep chatting instead of having that awkward um, <laughs> wet felting time. And then um, since I have some already finished here, I'll show you how to put them together. It's really not hard. You will need a needle and thread. Um, and I'm using a little bit of rice in the, in the bottom. Anything heavy. Something actually like, like BBs or... Something non-organic might be better because it would just last forever. And um, so, but something to weigh down the bottom, the biggest snowball, and then um, the other ones are just filled with off-white chunky core, and a 22 gauge wire for your arms, and um, yeah, and then a few other colors for his head's not sewn on, so it keeps falling off. Could and do a couple pennies or something. Oh yeah, that's right. a good idea. A little loose change. Yeah, that's perfect. Or BBs. <laughs> what? But then what? you might need them. Yeah. And you'd have to go in you, with you, the snowman. Sadly, you might need your pennies <laughs> too. <laughs> so um, we have the t-shirts. And they yes, are... People have liked your t-shirts. Okay, and they're, um, we improved upon the color a little bit from our first round. I'm really happy with them. They're silk screened, which to me is like the, just the better way to go um, with t-shirt printing. And um, the certified instructors will say instructor on the back. The ones um, in the shop are... Do I need to turn these? 
Oh, yeah, come on in. Kyla says something different on the back. Mine says something different. <clears throat> this was the first one. See, I feel like we got the color a little bit. A little, like, they're a little darker. Yeah. And then we got some staff t-shirts for the crew here. Thank you. Is John the shirt? Oh, John. Is he in no. the shirt? I don't think so. Not in the shirt. <laughs> we do have a men's shirt. We do have some men's shirts. Um, and the listing has a picture of both. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Like the women's, the men's shirt actually has a, a larger neck than many, which I kind mm -hmm. of like. Like, I don't like them when they're all Tight. tied up against your, against your neck. And, um, they're a little darker. This has a slightly heathered gray. Um, the men's t-shirt, it's not black, but it's a very deep, um, slightly darker than the women's and the more like boxy traditional fit. So, um, and today we came up with a few um seraphina just like trivia questions and we're going to give away um a t-shirt and a mug and a hat <laughs> marbles would work for a bottom oh eight. marbles would be perfect yeah. and like yeah a little duh <laughs> like little rocks from um Decorative things, you know, mm -hmm. like you would get at Joanne's. That's that that would be great. All right. Can you wear the t-shirts if you're not an instructor? Yes, but not one that says "Don't steal someone's" that says "Instructor" on it. Oh, they'll, they'll hunt you down. I'm just kidding. So they are on the website now. The shirts are available I, now. I the logo was designed for the certified instructor course. But because I wanted to create like a look for it and like a new um, kind of feel to what, but the, the logo is for the curriculum, which to me is kind of everything that we've done over time and with you guys and that you guys are doing. So it's like, it's kind of like just the, the, the pot of techniques and knowledge and community and that's what it means to me um whereas seraphina fiber art with the bunny that's like the business you know what i mean mm -hmm. like it's the way i think of it anyway um question yes oh there yes there are well there's a couple questions there will be some prizes that we will ship out um Oh, the men's shirts, I was going to say. There are only a couple men's shirts. We only got a handful of them. Yeah. And we only got mediums. I didn't realize quite how they're, like, yeah. really sizable. So I know we, sh we should get some smalls. And it's a little, with the T-shirts, we're buying them. You know, there's a lot of print on demand sites, but we're buying them and storing, you know, ordering them ahead of time and storing them. So that we did do kind of a poll a few months ago before the holidays to see what everybody likes um, or what size they might like to get an idea. And if we run out of a certain size that you want, we, we can, the process has been, we've been through the process now, the printers knows what they need to do so we can, we can order more. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've got a boodle, which I have already used somewhat. Um, Any other questions right now? Um, there's excitement about the hat, shirt, and mug. And I guess when we ask the question, it's going to be the first person that I see that answers it. In the chat, in correctly. The chat. Yeah. We'll give you a heads up when a question is coming. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, it's just for fun. So. Yes. <laughs> um, so the bulk of your boodle is off-white chunky core. Um, boodles are different from supply packs in that we're pulling the product as we sell it versus like this is exactly what, you know, you know, or an estimate for what you need for the project. So it's a four ounce bundle of off-white chunky core, two ounces of Serafina white, um, an ounce of natural merino, um, an ounce of mulberry silk and we did throw in there a little bit of Angelina 
and um, I've used quite a bit of this already. So that was, um, you know, an extra and then an ounce of redwood, which has a really nice color variation and is great for wrapping the arms. But any natural, like, well, this one's not, this one's dyed, but anything in that gray brown realm is fun for the arms. This was, so these I made. And I layered in the Angelina and the silk. And I was like, wow, like if you get a chunk of Angelina, it really doesn't felt, doesn't felt. So I felt that these were a little like, I don't know, kind of webby and not super well felted. So then I, when I made these, I decided to, um, card together some fiber first and it didn't really make a, make a difference but we'll card together a little bit of fiber and do it that way it's just easier to lay it on when it's all carded together and um so i don't need this yet so to for the the top layer of the snowman i'm going to card together some silk, some Angelina, and some Serafina white. It really is, I find it easiest to lay out my um, my fiber with the Merino because the Merino just, it's so smooth, it lays down really nicely and um, it makes that great base. Like you can see, you can see how thick it is and what it looks like. Okay. The Seraphine, you could just use more Merino in here, um, which I might do. The Seraphina white is just nice and white, but sometimes they're really not very different at all. And the Merino um, is easier to pull, you know, smooth and felt. So no worries if you would like to use the Merino instead of the Seraphina white. Put a little bit of both. Right, should we ask our first question? I don't. I don't know. People were hoping to relax, and now they're all <laughs> on their toes. Oh no! Everyone's all stressed out. Oh no! I said it wasn't meant to stress anyone out. No. <laughs> That's so funny. Damn. All right, we can relax a little bit. Okay. Oh, I'm sure they're gonna want to. <laughs> Kyla and Jennifer helped me clean up my studio and I really wish that I had taken a before and after picture because it is pretty, it is pretty striking. It was a disaster and now it is um, not. And I'm actually gonna work in there. So what you're using, it looks like we have someone pretty new joining us. Those are hand carters that we mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we offer. Um, and and if, if it's a wired dog brush, which it looks yeah. like it's a similar. And like I said, the other ones I totally made without doing this. I just laid thin amounts of the fiber down. So I'll show I'll show both ways. I'm gonna make two floofs of this blend. And um, you know what, Kyla? I'm probably going to need more Merino okay. and Angelina. Um, I can do that. And the, nat the natural Merino should be some in my oh, studio. Okay. Um, on the top shelf of that Merino shelf. You need more Angelina? But, um, yeah, if I were going to show it differently, you know. So both these floofs, I put Serafina White, Angelina, Silk, and the Merino. Thank you. So here is this. Yeah. What's that? Well, there's a leaf. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Oh, okay. That's perfect. Thank you. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> so 
someone used some silk pinky. Wasn't sure if I'm pulling and laying it right. If someone's trying to. Yeah, we can get. I can get a hanky out and show that too. All right. Biggie back there. Um. They would, and if you know where they would be, in um Marsha's. Dying space. Dot D Y I N G. <laughs> All right. I'm moving like a herd of turtles here this morning, even though I'm on coffee. Right. And it's the afternoon. <laughs> and it's the afternoon. <laughs> All right. So I'm get out my. I'll do two. I'll do two sets. It's on your shelf. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. So I've got two sets here, and you just want to spread them out on your um, felting surface because they're going to get quite a bit of fringe coming off the edges, and you don't want them to run into each other but I'll focus on one at a time um, on the overhead. When, um, when you pull, I try to grab just the ends and so that I get a nice, um, even, thin sort of stroke. I was watching the Gentle Roller <laughs> videos and I think a lot of well, wet felters put it down and hold that and pull that. So whatever works better for you, that works pretty well, but I'm so used to this that that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so uh, just fanning out um, Merino on here. Kyla, can I ask you to do one real quick? Sure. Because Any, my nose is running. Yeah. Any <laughs> tips for keeping the silk and Angelina from sticking to dry hands? She's going to sneeze. Maybe I should have been listening to what you were doing. Right? A layer this way. A layer this way. Okay, sorry. Lotion. What's the tips for keeping it from your dry hands? Silk oh. is the worst in the winter. Thank you. Well, I don't um, know how to do it right, but for some reason this year, you're not so dry. I'm not having. I know Sassy um, I am has. Super dry. Yeah. Um. So I I don't know. I don't know if like if you put something like bunny butter, which use it at night after you wash your hands, mm -hmm. like preventatively. Um. But I guess you could wear gloves. Yeah. Um, if it's that, thin, yeah. you know. Uh oh. This one went with this one. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Um, the resists are mm -hmm. shelf liner. Shelf liner. It could mm -hmm. be. Um, someone just said a craft foam, like those sheets of craft foam. Oh yeah, would yeah, also yeah. Work. And this is one kind of shelf liner. We have some that are, like the clear, um, with lines on, so they're textured, which is kind of cool. Yeah. They have their own. Yeah, it comes like all different ways. Yeah. The, the small ones are actually a little trickier. Uh, so this fiber you're using is, you could just use Merino, but this is a blend. <laughs> This what I'm using right now is, is just the merino. the merino. It's just so much easier to to, start to with that. yeah to line to line up. So I'm going to show two a few different ways okay. to address the tops of them. I feel like this merino is slightly um slightly more off white than what I was just using, which happens sometimes. Frosty's wife put on her face at night. 
Um, I don't know what. Cold cream. <laughs> For a while there, I started using Noxzema again. Remember Noxzema? Oh, Noxzema. It felt good. I like the way it smells, too. Maybe it's just a, you know. Memory from yeah. youth. Amazon envelopes would work as a resist. The plastic ones with the bubble wrap on the inside. Oh. Oh, yeah. I mean, anything that you can recycle is, like, very good. I'd say with, like, the crisscrossing um, that you have, you know, probably, like, four layers all... Not four heavy layers, but just they're overlapping each other. It's, it's a little hard to describe, but you guys are, are watching me in real time. So, okay. So we have this fluff that we carded. So that's one way to, um, you know, address the, t to get the shine and the texture in there. And I'm just making sure it's kind of going every which way and, um, covering that. So I'm going to do that on a few. Could you use Serafina white as a base layer? It's so, it's a little too poofy, I think. Blended with Merino? I did make a Serafina white and Merino blend and okay. it's better like that. It's just that the merino already being roving, it's so easy to just pull, to pull yeah, to get make sure that you're getting consistent. How um, much went in the boodle? An ounce probably, right? An ounce of uh, merino. Merino, which relative to how these are made, um, you know, you're probably going to want some more merino than that, depending on how many snowmen you want to make. Right, and the size of the... Yeah. Oh, this one's a little cray cray. Okay, so those are using our, um, the blend that we made. I did not need to make two <laughs> piles of it. But um, two piles would make at least two snowmen, so or two carters full, um, hand carters full. So I'm going to save that, and then I'm going to show you the hanky. Let's let's get out a stack so you can see how to pull them apart. Oh, these might already be fairly pulled apart. And I think oh, you know what these are? Oh, I got these at Sheep and Wool a long time ago. That's They're great. actually hats. Do you want me to get a regular hanky? Like, why are they hat shaped? <laughs> I'm a snowman. <laughs> okay, this is this is a regular hanky. Okay. <laughs> so you want to pull it really? Uh, am I on the overhead? Okay, that's better. You want to pull it really thin. Get rid of if you can. What will happen is the edges will be thicker. So thin out any chunky edge. I can even pull it off. I solved the scalp problem, John. <laughs> I just think about how this immediately is not a joke. Like anyone who, any new person who comes in. <laughs> I solved the scalp problem. <laughs> Okay. And it looks so much better. Really. <laughs> this is, I'm just gonna, this is like, we need um, a felting chef's hat. And that's yes. what, maybe we will make a tutorial. We'll be making felting chef's hats. I'm very distracted today. Okay. <laughs> it's the coffee. <laughs> it happened the other day. I know. You're buzzing all over the place. <laughs> and then. On top of that, I'm going to take a little bit of my, I could take a little bit of my mixture. If I don't use that, 
I could take a teeny tiny bit of Angelina and really just kind of concentrating this towards the center because um, the edges are going to wrap around and then it's going to get another coat on the other side. And then when it, wherever you put some Angelina, you want to put a little bit of top coat. So this is um, the Merino and the Serafina white parted together. So really thin. So you're not covering your Angelina and all your silk up, but you are getting a tad of, like I'm pulling it out like a thin web. What? <laughs> I'm not sure to what we you're referring. <laughs> okay. I think it's the joke. How does a snowman get to work? I don't know how. By icicle. <laughs> <laughs> that I like. See, it's I like that one. one though. All right. So no hanky. We're just going to use the silk and the Angelina. I think I would put the silk first. So mulberry silk is really, um, it's long and very smooth. And so you kind of want to disrupt that, um, that linear quality of it. I do anyway. <laughs> so I'm just gonna. Are you going to whip out your head? Oh, we should throw this in there. We should put some wool on it and throw it in at the same time. That would be a very inside joke t-shirt. What felt joy did. All right, and a little bit of Angelina. And then a little bit of um, Serafina white or blend or merino. All right, so it's two different kinds. And I'm just gonna put the um, mix onto this one. Oh, will you um, get a picture for me? I think I have everything else here. Just need the the water. Oh wait, you have a you have a bar. You need a little soap bar too. Uh, soap bar, and do I have a pool noodle? So Kyla's getting um a picture with. Hot soapy water. Okay, I'm gonna, let's see, I wanna make sure we know which one's the hanky one. So I'm gonna put these three over here. And I'm not gonna be entirely in the overhead for a couple minutes as I get these going. And I'm getting really warm, so I'm gonna take off my silk hat. Yeah, I don't remember what these are for. I got them at um, Sheep and Mole. Speaking of Sheep and Mole, it's not that far away. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. move it over. Thank you. I'm using your towel. Okay. All right. We'll pause a minute and see if there's any questions, or we could do one of the questions. Yes. Um, have you worked with bamboo? Yeah, bamboo works a lot like silk. It'll be real shiny and get a lot of interesting texture um, when you combine it in your in your wet felting. Should we do a question? Yes, we should do a question. All right. Okay. First question. question is. So I started needle felting in two thousand and eight. Serafina officially started 
in 2014, <laughs> I think. Um, there was a year that was like my most prolific year. So what year in terms of making animals? I think I made over 300 animals in one year. So what year was my most prolific year is the question. Can you use organza instead of silk over the top? This is wall, which is a polyester. Oh, or in the snowball not, or? Uh, Kathy Dispro, got it. Awesome. Kathy, were you around then? Like, were you, because what I, I mean, like following, <laughs> because we didn't have the website. I had the blog. I had the Etsy shop. 2012, right? Yeah, okay. 2012. And I did uh, a critter a day for 30 days or more. I can't remember how many days I did that. That was fun. Does this have some um, Dawn in it? It does. Okay. Um, the fabric that's on top is a wall fabric. So I'm trying to wet it just until it's wet and not like dripping everywhere. So Kyla, this is not, okay, so this next question is not a prize question. <laughs> Although I thought it should. <laughs> but Kyla thinks it's funny that I guess I've told the story of what I ate all that winter <laughs> when I sat and felt it, all those animals. So that's the next question, but not for a prize. Does anybody remember what I was eating daily? <laughs> and I don't know why. Maybe I was more just making a joke about it. <laughs> so everything's wet and <laughs> yeah, I, I remember at the end of that winter it being like okay Sarah <laughs> gotta rein it in a little gotta get I figured the first answer would be chocolate, which is why I thought it was funny because it's not chocolate, <laughs> not ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. So my goal here is just to get it started. Like I don't, I, I want to be able to get this going just enough to start to hold the fiber together um, to peel the voile off and flip it over and do it all again. Um, so we, you know, we're, we're doing this step by step here, but we do also have the, um, the vessel tutorial. I'm trying to keep my head out of the shot. <laughs> Beth Muller is close. She said, said Slim Jims. <laughs> I could have gotten a sponsorship. <laughs> slap, slap it to a Slim Jim. <laughs> Wait, did you say what the first prize was? Oh, we'll do the t-shirt. Shirt we'll do t -shirt. first? Yeah. Okay, so Kathy got the shirt. So Kathy, you can email um, admin at seraphinafiberart.com, and that'll be Kyla, and tell her what size. Before they're gone! <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so that is actually probably, hopefully, good enough. Right, I'm gonna go with Beth and Diane. We're pretty close. Ooh, okay. Um, Diane said cheese strips. So cheese strips and sl and slim jims. Yeah, that's close. <laughs> that's close. I ate a lot of salami and cheese. <laughs> that's what. That's what happened. Which I don't eat that now. I like that way now. So any dish soap would theoretically work, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You will have to make sure that you're, um, as you peel this back, you're finding the edge. It's because it's pretty thin and holding it from coming up with the wall. And we're kind of want to make sure, did I? I did, okay. That we're not um, felting into the, wall 
Now, I don't know if it will mess us up if we try the gentle roller with the wall instead of plastic. I'm kind of curious just to try it. Well, it doesn't matter if it messes us up because I'm not using these. So we're going to experiment live. All right, dry your hands. Milo's good. Sleeping in the sun. <laughs> Flip them over. And then without, you know, try, with, try not to make too big of a pleats. Like you just have to pull a little, a little section at a time. Um, bring your fringe over and then we just do it again on this side. And I'm going to move a little faster this time um, so that we're not taking too much time here. And you spend a second like kind of pushing them in onto the edge because you don't want to get you want these to be pretty tight against the edge so that you don't get a little seam around the edge the pumpkins are really fun to make this way um, and we just use a bigger resist and put pumpkin colors well we do a little more than that but the the tutorial covers it Laura's saying no wall in the gentle roller. Okay. It makes a huge mess. Okay. All right. We'll do the, we can stick with the plastic. The sizes of these, someone asked now that they're exposed. Can you check them again? They said they still are exposed. I said I'd check later because they were all covered. <laughs> the bigger ones are six, um, six, five, four. Okay. And the smaller ones were, um, four, three, two. five and a half, oh. four and a half, three, and three and a half, I think. But anywhere, anywhere in there is good. All right. So basically an inch apart. Yeah. All right, you guys, you guys entertain me now. How's that? While I do this, <laughs> tell me some good stuff. Tell me, uh, name some of the, or tell us maybe your next most challenging project. Like, what's everybody doing that is going to push them farther to the next level. I've been watching Cobra Kai. <laughs> no mercy. <laughs> Strike fast. Straight first. Never take no for an answer. But Sensei, no means no. <laughs> Rena works on a lion. Ooh. She's working on a lion. Cool. Oh, I love making Trisha, lions. Trisha, white gorilla and lion. How do a you white gorilla. Deborah's making a cat cave. Oh, the cat cave. That, that, you need the gentle roller for that one. We have a hound, a hare. How do you keep moths from lunching on your creations? Sometimes I don't, sadly. Um, so I just started looking into that a little deeper. Because the more things we have sitting around here, the more the more it happens. Um, we've been good that like, you know, we've been mm -hmm. good, but, um, the, like, so Karina, the giraffe, I just bring her head down every once in a while and spray the lavender spray on her. Um, not sure how effective that is. Um, definitely if it's being put away, put it in plastic, you know, sealed up, um, 
things tend to get mods faster if for some reason if they're just sitting in a dark place um, the mods like that environment so rotating things out getting them you know either in the sun or you know in a fresh place just keep your eyes on it basically we have a 2d bald eagle oh nice um 2d wet fuzzy i'm sorry you guys the coffee's making my nose rough Giraffe, fox, donkey, ooh, a life-size Scottish terrier. I put all that stuff away, like I didn't need it. <laughs> That's a big project, a life-size Scottish terrier. That is a huge project. Where did I put it? <sighs> Deborah Paul just finished a kangaroo with a joey in the top. Yes, it was so good. Was the joey full or just a severed head <laughs> because when I made them I was lazy and it was just a severed head with a couple of arms <laughs> it's hard to make it that small and fit and um but yes the the, the kangaroo is a really fun one to figure out and and make I haven't made a Sasquatch in a long time. I feel like that was my, like my 2011 was, um, I liked making, it was more like Abominable Snowman. Oh, okay. A griffin with the feather technique. Nice. So Sabine and I chatted yesterday and I, uh, let her know, you know, that she could share, um, and sort of evolution on the feather technique which was a way to put two together so that you have a, one color on one side and a different color on the other side. But I'll let her share beyond that. Anne is going to put lavender petals in these snow people along with some rice. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, sometimes rice or any grain or anything that's like sitting can can get like more like mm -hmm. a pantry moth. I don't know how that affects um, the felting. So if you have you know like the penny option or something non organic, I, I think that would be a little bit more um, helpful in terms of like long term existence. Because really, if we can keep the moths away. Um, and the, and the pets, <laughs> these should last, you know, our creations should last a long, long mm -hmm. time, generations. So um, Bonnie has six projects going on right now. Wow. She works on multiples. At yeah, time. I do too, which is why my studio looked the way it did. All right. Not, you're not going to need as much water this time because um, you know, the other side's already wet and so we're doing the same thing. We just want to get this going, peel the wall back, tuck the sides over and then, um, and then start wet felting a little more in earnest. So when you start, um, you, I'm just starting kind of gently because this the you want to give the wool a second to um, <clears throat> start to come together without too much force and then you can feel it firming up and coming together and then you can get a little more rigorous with it I'm so excited for the February fiber fairy fiber fairy 
Which is, it's on the calendar, right? Um, you know what? I don't know if I put it on the calendar. It's, it's very dear to my heart. I didn't because it's a little unusual. I know, but we but should. I, should. I think we should. Always rub in the same circle, same direction when rubbing in circles. No. Wax on, wax off. No. <laughs> Bigger circles. <laughs> it's an analogy for life. <laughs> yeah. John knows. <laughs> Swax on, swax off. Adding the fiber fairy as I speak. All right. Can't wait to see who is the first to post the fiber fairy, the February fiber fairy date in the chat. Which is not one of the door prizes. Not a door prize. <laughs> I'm just curious to see. So now we have encapsulated our resists. We do have the doodle bug tutorial. Yeah. If someone wants to make a quirky colony. I have not made too many insects. So butterflies, the bees. I have not made ants. I have not made, I really haven't even made a spider, which I think is a really great felting opportunity. Because spiders are horrible creatures. <laughs> That's why I need to live to be a hundred so that I can. <laughs> Make every, every darn thing. There's so much. Sorry if I offended anyone. I have a spider issue. <laughs> All right. This one is going to have some thin spots, but it's going to be okay. Who got it? Rena. Rena sees it. 222. 222. 22, which is a Tuesday. That's going to throw everybody off. Uh, yeah. But it had to be. So wrap your head around it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Fiber Fairy Tuesday. <laughs> that seems wrong. It seems wrong, though. It's just not right. No, it's so right. It is not a Friday. It's not a Friday. And we and if you think it's wrong, we're gonna thank and blame Kyla's mom Nancy <laughs> for planting that seed. Because it's two, twenty-two, twenty-two. Too important. Too huge. To ignore. To ignore. And we're not gonna live to two twenty-two, twenty-two, twenty-two. So we gotta <laughs> We got to strike while we can. It's depressing. It's not. That's like a long, long way away. It's okay. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm pulling the edges in and making sure that it's not, um, you know, that it's real tight, tight to the edges, edges, just with soapy hands. All right, should we load the gentle roller? Possibly. Can you add more fiber to thin spots once you remove the resist? You can, I'm very lazy. <laughs> oh, once you remove the resist, yes. So I have um, a couple of snowballs over here that are a little thin and definitely take some of that fluff that we, um, that we prepared and just stab it on. 
Right, it has to be stabbed in. It won't wet felt in. It won't wet felt in. Once the resist is out, I mean, there might at be a way. Point, but... It still wouldn't really. Wet at this felt point, in. you could add, you could add a little bit okay. of fiber and keep wet felting. It does. You would want to do it as early as possible because once things start um, coming together, it, it's harder to get stuff to new stuff to stick. Are we going live on Fiber Fairy Tuesday? And if so, does it have to be at? o'clock well it does <laughs> it does maybe even 222 Ooh. <laughs> yeah. no way <laughs> live from our stay home. tuned <laughs> <laughs> all right enough of that we gotta we gotta move on here all right we're gonna try i'm gonna line these up If you want to bring um, the plastic in, well, I, that thing's not going to fit across this table. Oh. So I'm going to I'm going to give you I'm going to give you this. Oh my! Feels like a big responsibility. It is. It's all up to Kyla. I don't know about that. You know what to do. Hey, I really I'm not sure. Plastic. Plastic, plastic. Plastic, plastic. Remember there were those two smaller plastics? No towel. No towel. Plastic, plastic. Plastic. Snowballs, no plastic. Snowballs. Yeah. And the little ones are on the folded up on the counter, I think. I'm going to switch to felting mode. Did you see Cloudy with the chance of meatballs, John? Yeah. Oh, don't you love it when he's like, like, um, narrates everything he's doing? Yeah. Commence towel folding. I might just stand this whole thing. No bubble wrap. <laughs> That's what we did yesterday. Okay, I do not have um, aquarium rocks or change handy, so I'm going to use uh, rice. But what will... Oh. Okay, we're going to go a little bit out of order because I want to keep working. But what will happen is when those are finished... Um, I'll show you how to make the cuts and remove the um, resist and finish felting it. Didn't think this through. Okay, and then then you fill them with rice. Like, let's see, I'm in the overhead. Like this one's filled with rice. So that once you have the ball shape, the rice holds and reaffirms the ball shape like while it dries and then you take your biggest um, base snowball and take most of the rice out of it or all of it if you're going to use a different filler and leave some rice in so for those of you who maybe did some laid out your wet felting um, we're kind of skipping, we're skipping ahead because we can't, I didn't have, um, we just have to wait for those to come out. But we can start, if you have these ready, we can start stuffing them. So my base has a little bit of rice in it, which is gonna help it, you know, stay upright. And I'm gonna take my off-white chunky core and just use little pieces and start filling her up. You know, what I love about snowmen is that um, everybody finds a slightly different style. Like you would think, you know, three buttons, a smile, and a carrot nose, but they can look so different, and it's, um, it's really cool to see. And people have gotten so creative with, you know, knit scarves and um, all kinds of, accessories for their snowmen 
Uh, some felted sweaters, like from the Goodwill, are great to cut up for hats and scarves and mittens and stuff like that. If you're a knitter, then I'm sure you'll have a blast with it. Uh, this guy has on a, this is actually a, um, it kind of came like this. It's a knit yarn that I thought made a good scarf. His head's not really on there. <laughs> so exciting. So I was explaining that we have to jump around because we have to yeah. show taking out the so every time I think I can't fit more wool in there, I get a little more wool in. People would love to see the gentle roll. Okay. Um, is there a way to do that, Sean? Um, no. Okay. I think I can. <laughs> okay. I think I can. I'm going You're going to gonna lose me for I'm, a minute? Yeah, I'm going to switch the only overhead until okay. ready. Okay. So we're going to switch to overhead. John is going to take the, um, the uh, second camera. Um, or do you have a third camera? No, I don't. Okay. Tyla, if you could... Um, yes. Watch over here. When I let you know that it's ready. Ooh, Kyla has a lot of jobs today. <laughs> yeah. I always forget to put the arms in. Okay, so first I need to figure out. Okay, good, I'm safe. I stuffed one base. This is a second. That goes with that. That goes with that. All right, I'm good. Do not fill your second snowball without putting without putting the wire in. So what you want to do is you want to put half, half, not quite half, a third of the wool in the bottom. This one's really jacked up. I'm going to use this one. And I'm just going to dump this. Don't mind me. Ooh, I'm switching. Yo, from across the room, from he's... From across the room. <laughs> Did you tie it? You tied it? It's tied. Yeah. Oh, wait, a tie fell off. <laughs> we see a problem with the roller. This is the uncensored reality. Yeah, and then show them my studio. <laughs> Which is now, um, if you, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, don't you hold my desk. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Mayday, mayday. <laughs> the wrapper's off. Okay, I'm switching back. The overhead, there we go. Oh my gosh, so funny. Just so you guys know, no one is looking at your comments right now. <laughs> so just give us. Oh gosh. Kyla is the best. You're getting props, Kyla. That much I can see. Okay, I have my base snowball filled. Oh, that was great, John. I have... Um, my middle snowball halfway filled because I need to put in the arm wire. So I just look for the best spot to be the front. See, this is a little bit of a thin spot right here. So I will, um, I'll probably stab a little wool on that. But I think this looks like the front. And then I put two holes not quite straight across from each other. Like if you're looking down on this and that's 12 o'clock, straight across from each other would be 9 and 3. I would do like 8.30 and 3.30. Teeniest hole that you can because you do not want to be trying to patch a great big hole. Okay. 
How's it going, Kyla? Yeah. I'm sure it's fine. Okay. Get that centered somewhat. And now we can fill the rest. <clears throat> oh, and we used to have an antique, um, we used to have a paper, newspaper roller for the fire. Um, reminds me of my grandpa. This Christmas for my family and friends, my little homemade thing was fire starters. And I went out and gathered like all kinds of dried grasses and hydrangeas and um, fronds from my yard and my property. And then um, also used some dried sage or lavender, rosemary. Um, you could use orange peel. I used... Um, and oh, and pine cones, which Kyla shared with me. And then um, I stuffed the bottom of the pine cone with cotton, cotton balls, and then dipped that in wax and then tied everything with a big bouquet um, with some brown paper. And so you had like this bouquet fire, fire starter. They were really cool and they work really, really well. And then for people who didn't, you know, like my mom would use hers. Uh, she has to travel with hers. So I made little, um, more like muffin tin ones that were a little more condensed. What got me on that? Oh, the newspaper roller. It's so cool in the fiber art world how much innovation is still like happening. Like the gentle roller and the felt loom, they're they're just pe people that saw the need and and engineers and who yeah. made the machines. Yeah. All righty. So now we have two. Oh, now I'm like in both places again. Oh, I have all three. All right, we have all three. I forgot that I had to felt the face. <laughs> okay. So I like to just shore up the snowballs. I guess I don't really need to. I feel like we went through and like tied them at some point. I feel like we, um, did a running stitch and pulled them tight. Oh, closed tight. Yeah, but I don't think you really need to. How firm do you fill them? I mean, I'm trying to get it. When you're stuffing something and not felting it, it's not um, as firm as a felted item. So you can't really overstuff them? No, I don't think you can overstuff it. Yeah. That's what I said. Like, just when you think it's it's got enough, you can fit more, you know? When do they, you do wrap the arms later? Yeah, I'm going to wrap the arms. But they go through unwrapped. They go, oh yeah, they go through unwrapped, yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions that we... Um, someone's asking about the sparkle, but we have a lot of our people oh, good. Uh, answering yeah so I'll show it um, in case I made some decorations last uh, so a few years ago I made some snowballs and icicles like to hang on the tree so if you wanted just to make snowballs um, then you would want to do this step where you seal it up and maybe just felt a little cover on it mm -hmm. and then you could um, bead it um, right. Which tutorial do we have that shows the beading? Our our coworker, our coworker Jenny um, showed us how to bead 
one day. So with the um, it is the beaded. There is a beaded embellishment. Wet felt and pre felt beaded embellishments. Yeah, it's just under the mini tutorials. So I've got a white thread on you know already on a needle here. I'm just going to use. But just basically like a quarter inch stitch, a running stitch around the top with enough um, thread to be able to tie it. You're just, you're creating a little um, cinch for it. And you can just pull that, pull that closed. If you um, if you put two wraps in your knot, it helps hold it a little better if you don't have extra hands. So let me back up here. If you wrap this around twice. Usually I get Kyla's sticker finger in there. Okay. <laughs> so that's, you know, this is pretty straightforward, but that's how you would seal it up. On the bottom snowball, I like to leave the, um, this edge at the top, you know, and then sew this, put this one at the bottom and then this one at the bottom, obviously. Oh, it's gonna be cute little. It's gonna be like a little, little, little brother snowman, snow person. <laughs> that one's head is still off. Yeah. He's hanging on Beep. the head. <laughs> yeah. I think it's easier to felt the head before you put it on. Maybe a little less force mm -hmm. on the on the stitches. It's awesome if you have a hooked needle just helps um, kind of get in and out of the um, of the snowballs a little easier. But if you don't, you're gonna be fine with a straight one. Definitely wanna find the white thread. And then I'm going to work with a, with a double layer. Mm, I could wrap the arms before I put that on. That would probably be a good idea too. We should do another question. Yes, okay. we should do another question. The second question. What did I say? Hat? For the hat? Or the hat. This one I feel like we've done before. I think the answer is going to come pretty fast. Okay. Who is the first person that is currently an employee that worked with me? The very first person that worked with me on needle felting stuff. This is not my favorite part. It stresses me out a little bit. Milo. <laughs> John. Oh, wow. Beth? Beth? Yep. Yep. Talbot. And I didn't know Talbot when I started. Yeah. Because he came back. Yes. He worked with me. Then he was away, and then he came back. Okay. I don't like this part, so I hope you have fun with it for me. Then we got to bend the wire to make the little twigs. And I, um, I like to go sort of more like stick-like than like perfect hands, you know? So I put some bends in, 
and then maybe make a an offshoot and then maybe another one something like that <laughs> I don't know you tell me <laughs> Patty Cornelius guessed Frank Sinatra if she had guessed Neil Diamond she might have been right <laughs> And then I also don't make them usually the same. I, I go for the natural snowman look. So Tom has helped you with making the like paper kit instructions oh yeah all that the first thing that i thought that i could do to expand the business was to make animals more animals faster okay and i taught talbot um how to and he also helped me with like etsy and shipping oh, and okay. he ran to the post office oh, a lot okay. and um but i taught him i would make the armature and then i taught him how to wrap and he would give me back like the most perfectly wrapped oh, okay. animal ever, like way better than I would do it. <laughs> but the business problem was it took him a long time to do that. And really like most of the work is in the finishing. Okay. Whereas it took me a very short time to wrap. So it wasn't like a good spot to throw right. someone else in. Right. I just thought, oh, if I have more things already ready for me to finish. Like, um, yeah. yeah, this needs more fiber in it. Oh. oh, I hear the gentle roller. It should be. <laughs> Telling it should be us done, it's done. Right? Yes. It done. And then do we need to um, turn it is the question. I don't know. Uh-oh. Kyle's in the other room going, oh, no. <laughs> All right. I, I am going to have to sit down now. I apologize in advance for my not clean step it. Okay. I want to throw a little bit of fiber on where the arms are coming out. <laughs> these arms, I think because this snowman is smaller, these arms look like super huge and wacky, um, but I don't care. Okay. So I'm just kind of folding that around there and stab it on and help it stay in place. Yeah, I think let's turn them around or just, you know, upset them okay. and then put them in again. Yeah, they're all sort of okay. rolled one way. Okay, cool. And then when I get the gray on here, it'll help also um, lock these arms down so they're not all wibbly wobbly. did that before. It's one way to do it. If you want it more substantial, I guess. You could use um, a little bit of swax or Tacky wrap, I'm gonna try to wrap these without, without.
Am I messing things up, John? No. Okay. All right. So is anyone making a snowman right now? Or you guys gotten more into um, watching? I like to work with like four inch strips. And just sort of just get it going. I don't mind if there's a little bit of gray sticking off where I start, I can cover it and stab it in. And it doesn't have to be like super skinny or anything. In fact, I think my other snowman over there is a little too skinny. And what makes a limb look realistic actually is if every time it turns, it gets a little thinner. So like you can even put a second, second layer on it to try to indicate that. I'm gonna lock this down a little bit. Do, do, do. I am gonna use a little bit of tacky wrap and some pliers. Thank you. Both ties have fallen off. That would mean the babies have been there a little bit. Yeah. I tried to dry them off a little bit. It's a more. lot thinner, you know? Yeah, like there's not a lot of wool lot. in there. Any questions? Someone said my snowman's middle burst in a place that's not the armhole. Oh, no. <laughs> well, fill it, like, as best you can. And then, um... Needle felt. Needle felt, yeah. Or, if you need to, empty it out. Where it's burst, like, try to lay it down and needle felt from the inside. Um, you know, because you could really, you could get the needle in there and. The mug's still coming in by June. Yeah. Oh, wait. Do we have a mug? I don't know. <laughs> we have to have a mug. We'll have a mug somewhere. Who won the mug? We all have only done a shirt and a hat so far. Okay. Okay. Third question will be for the mug. I'm pretty sure we have a mug. <laughs> if we don't have a mug... We must have a mug. If we like, I didn't finish my sentence. If we don't have a mug, um, we could give them a choice of a hat or waiting or. She wrapping the arms. Wrapping the arms. Listening to the gentle roller. <laughs> Someone said, do we sell the gentle roller? We don't. Gentle roller sells the gentle roller. I don't know. Um, I don't think anybody else does, but 
it's not like um it's not inexpensive but for what it is it's not if you do a ton of wet felting i mean we're just getting used we're just getting to know it we're just getting used to it but like I would say it's it's going to be a huge time saver. Mm -hmm. I think if you're going to, like, buying big equipment, a carter is an awesome investment. Mm -hmm. Once you have a drum carter, like, you will just be like, how did I, <laughs> how did I live without this? Um, unfortunately, we do not sell them anymore. And the company that I'm most familiar with um, has closed. So... I have had a Louette. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've used. Not too many, really. The other Carters. Yeah. I'm not like. I don't know. I'm going to. I might play around with a gentle roller. I mean, I definitely will. And we put yesterday in there something that I had already wet felted and it seemed to do a better job. Imagine that. Um, I would like to try, um, wet felting on it. Um, things that were already needle felted. Um, I would like to try making like, I think you could make some really cool decor like placemats or, oh, yeah. um, I think, um, it would be not a bad idea to have some swax going and just touch on, like I just fin like wrapped this around and it would, yeah, it would probably be a good idea too. I'm going to wrap this again so that it's a little thicker. I don't like how skinny it is. Did you do the tree skirt on the roller? I didn't. I didn't. Oh my gosh. I did the tree skirt by hand. The ugly tree skirt, which I <laughs> took home put around the tree and I was like that is so ugly and every time I look at fanfare I'm like I have to get rid of that banner <laughs> <laughs> my cat loves it she's like oh thank you for this like to her it's like a I made her a magic flying carpet or something she's just <laughs> on it all the time well I did put it away now but the tree skirt was a good a, you know definitely a good learning experience see it sounds louder I feel like the yeah yeah sometimes the but that would have been the perfect thing to do although when you want to avoid felting the locks too much um I did a lot of it by hand like without I did roll it some but Then you can take in a single needle and really just stab that end in. I guess you could, I don't know. I was going to say you could have an initial wrap on the wire before you put it through. But then how are you like dealing with all the fingers? I don't know about that. All right, now I ended up with a little weird um, shape here. I didn't do a good job on my white. So I'm going to take a little bit of sparkly white and see if I can cover that weirdness up without it being too obvious. That looks better. How many rotations did it get, Kyla? Like, maybe it's good. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
looks like a some kind of insect. Have you used real twigs for arms before? That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> you could go outside, find a nice twig, um, make the hole, put a little glue on the end of the twig, you know, shove it in there, and then cut a needle felt all around yeah. it to help embed it. The only problem with like wood on stuff like this is that it will be more susceptible to drying and breaking oh, yeah. um, down the road. But, oh yeah, you could totally get creative with different... I if there's something you could put on the real twig that would prevent it from breaking. I don't know. Now you're getting into like, lower. Can you power text the twig? Right. Right. You could power text these things too. Someone said they used um, the cold wax. On the arms. Well, that's fun. But that looks cool. On the arms. Very cool. I swear I saw it. I'm just not sure where. Um, like, I don't know, something like cinnamon sticks or... Yeah, I use the cold wax in the arms. Yeah, that's great. Make and sell Patty McSavits on the gentle roller. Oh, too thick, I think. Mm -hmm. Although, we have the fuller, and that's basically how they were finished. Mm -hmm. But I think the washing machine situation might work well for Patty McStab. I don't know that the gentle roller is saving us much time on this one. Except we're not actually doing it. Yeah. Why did I make so many t fingers? What were you going to say? Sorry, I'm yelling. Um, someone wondered what Swax would do to the twig. Yeah, a little. I mean, I would. If you want to cover it, I would go with Power Tax or Power Wax. Um, but a little bit of Swax just to hold your fiber. It's fine. It's a little shiny, so mm -hmm. it would give you a shiny twig. Oh boy. I can't wait to see your snowmen. I know they're gonna outshine what I'm doing here today. these so they're not there we go it's a better look oh, look I said I don't make them symmetrical and they did end up kind of looking the same Thank you. You're going to master that thing. Oh, yeah. So I'm getting excited for sheep and wool. I was realizing it's not too far away now. Three months? Mm -mm. Or February? Two months. February, March. Oh, April. Three months. Is it May? It's, it's May, the right? first week of May, yeah. Three months. Okay, it's it'll a little be, ways away. It'll be, it'll be here before we know it. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, just make these, you know, takes a little time making them look the way you want.
So I'm telling y'all right now, totally game for walking around. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm trying, trying to imagine sheep and wool. Oh. Like, I think we could meet. We could split up. We could meet again. Like, we could have... It would be cool to find a landing place. Mm-hmm. Like, a place where we could put a blanket, you know, a cooler, and, you know... Because we're not going to be able to stay things. together. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's so much to see. Can congregate. Um, and then... Yeah. But I am not a um, a party monster, so when I get back to the hotel, I'm going <laughs> I'm going to watch a movie <laughs> and go to sleep. But I'm really excited for uh, well the good food. There's there's we found some good restaurants around there, oh. and um, and seeing vendors and seeing you guys and it's going to be so nice to be there as a shopper oh yeah although we will be like relegated to the the long distance parking and yes, all of those <laughs> but that's okay trisha said maybe 10 blankets yeah yes oh yeah lots of blankets So, what is sheep and wool? The one that, sheep and wool, Maryland sheep and wool, is a fiber um, show. And it's always the first weekend in May. And we did not go, um, due to COVID, for two years. Two years. They and we they wanted, canceled two years? Two years, yeah. yeah. 20, 20, yeah, 2020 and 2021. Mm-hmm. And they're having it this year, just, you know, so far so good. Um, and we plan to go um, as visitors, not vendors. And we were just letting everybody know about it in case they wanted to go and meet up. All right, so now I can sh- sew this on, and then I'll show the face, and then we'll see where we are. I'm not sure I'm going to, like, you know, you guys get the idea at this point. What happened? Oh, it goes like this. Wait a minute. It goes like this? I'm going to put it like this. It just looks kind of crazy to me. All right, that's my. <laughs> that looks so crazy. I think I gotta turn it. There we go. All right, so I need to sew these two snowballs together. So I've got my needle and thread. I got my knot. I'm gonna start with my knot hidden. I am not a sewer. <laughs> Do not uh, criticize my technique. I just do a running stitch and try to catch each um, each snowball up underneath, like as hidden as I can. I guess it does help to seal your um, seal your snowballs at the top because then the opening is smaller and it, this will be less hidden because you can get under there a little farther. How is it, Kyla? Okay. It's going to be interesting to see how taking those out and then reshaping them goes. I'll, once I get this on, I will do I'll do that. I 
I'm sure a more knowledgeable sewer is going to have a better way to do this, but this is the way I do it. Do we need to zoom this, John? Um, I mean, it's kind of. Okay, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. What's everybody saying? Um, there's some sheep and wool talk. I'm trying to scroll back to see where I left off. Okay. Some talk of favorite sheep. That's sheep uh, are so fun to see. Yeah, it is fun to see the sheep and the other fiber animals there. And the things that people are making, you know, mm -hmm. like. All right, I think I'm all the way around. Go a couple more. I wonder if Lee will come. I hope so. Yeah. don't think I've talked to her about it specifically. I'm planning another Sherafina. Um, we should. Yeah, I don't I don't have that on on the calendar right now, but it, it's been good. Needed to kind of recover from the holidays, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm just on the front here putting a little bit of fiber. Just at the seam? Yeah, just at the seam to make it a little less like pleated looking. It's really not noticeable once, you know, the whole thing is together. But yeah, you can see I had some weird seams and bumps. All right, let's take a look at the um, at the pieces that we made. This is gonna be my my guy's head, so I'm gonna work on that next. Uh, but I want to show you how these wet felted vessels turned out. So usually I would still sort of be on my felting surface, my wet felting surface, and then cut a kind of as small as you can to start. Oh, they're chilly. And then work your finger in there. You, do, you just don't want to make a bigger hole than necessary. And when you wet felt like, and you do need a hole in something, they just get bigger as you felt. It's kind of the opposite of the fiber gets smaller, but holes tend to get bigger, it seems like. And then I'm, I found the edge of this, and I'm working that out. And you want to do that with all of them. And then I have a bit of a seam. Not, not too bad, but you can tell where it was folded around the um, around the resist. So to get rid of that, I would take some soap and just try to get a finger in there. If I need to, I can re-wet. This is a little dry now. 
like I could re-wet my hand. These are very, they're well felted. They well yeah, felted. yeah. They're better felted than the, the ones I made. And all of this is in the vessel tutorial, um, which is why I'm not too worried about showing you today. And you can also go um, this way. So hole at the top, kind of the opposite of how the um, uh, resist was and full it a little bit. And that will definitely start to get rid of any seams. And then you need to rinse these really well. Um, this is very well felted, but sometimes I kind of rely on the hot cold <laughs> rinse to help me along. But really just rinse the soap out and then, um, and then I have a spinner which gets a lot of the extra water out. If you don't have a spinner, roll it up in a towel and really just trying to get as much extra water out as you can. And then when you have this all rinsed and as dry as possible, um, you pour rice in it so that it's drying, you know, in a nice, in a nice round shape. But yeah, that these, these turned out great. I'll do one more. I'll do the one that I thought this one um, had a little thin spot. Oh, I'm going to start to think wet felting is cool now. Because <laughs> he doesn't do the rolling part. I'm so bad about it. I feel like if I scoot over to be centered on the overhead, then I'm like way off on the, on the um, straight ahead. regular hot cold water rinse we don't do vinegar i think vinegar is more of like a dying We're thing dying. yeah this isn't going to be too bad even though it has a thin spot it's not a it's not it's still well felted someone said you can put a small balloon in it and blow it up until it's the right size Ooh, very cool could be stuffed with plastic grocery bags for it to dry instead. i would think so yeah Guys are full of ideas. Can you use a salad spinner? Yes. <laughs> when I worked at um, the Blue Moon at the beach, which was a fine dining uh, and gay bar, it was like a really cool place to work in a kitchen. Um, I was the salad spinner. Oh, really? Yeah. So I would put like, I don't even know how many heads of romaine lettuce you know, all broken up into a gigantic sink. You let, like, press it around. All Anything that's on there goes to the bottom. Mm -hmm. Just let it sit, and everything goes to the bottom. Then you lift it all out, and I put it on a, um, basically a gigantic tablecloth. And then I went outside, <laughs> and I went whoosh, whoosh, and water went like, whee, like everywhere. That's funny. That doesn't seem real. <laughs> that doesn't seem like the process. <laughs> Stick with me, John. I'm full of stories. <laughs> that was the process. <laughs> Let me tell you about the time I was a salad spinner. There was a lot of stuff there that was like so... Like we had a cheese cutter that was like a big wooden handle on each side. And I had to like put my weight, like my feet off the ground... Well, let me back up. I wasn't cutting cheese. <laughs> we had something called a moon pie. And so first I made the crust, which was um, chocolate wafers, kind of like Oreos, but without the filling okay. and a lot of butter. So you press that into the pan. Then we layered three kinds of ice cream. I forget what kinds, but weird, like blueberry, pistachio, and like something else. Like Okay, so then you have that. Then I made a meringue, whipped a meringue, pile it on top of the ice cream pie, give it peaks, right? So it's, it looks like the moon. It's like this big. Then you bake it 
ice cream and all to set the to cook the meringue so it had to be perfect yeah it had to be the oven had to be perfect to cook the meringue but not destroy the ice cream then you put it in the deep freezer if you forgot to get the moon pie, oh, the blue moon's gonna be mad at me. <laughs> like, if you, you for, right now. if you forgot to get the moon pie out of the deep freezer in time to soften up a little bit before you had to serve it, that's when you needed the cheese cutter <laughs> because cut there was no way to cut through all that with. Funny. Yeah. Okay, you guys. Back to this project here. <clears throat> now that I need some proprietary know, information. Right? Your sister's calling. She's like, Sarah! <laughs> I'm going to stab this a little bit just so that it's nice and this is the headpiece. Will you find me a little bit of orange and a little bit of black and a little bit of blush? <laughs> it's like all the things that I need for our felt along today. Mm. I made almond brittle, um, lacy almond brittle baskets. I learned a lot. I learned a lot there. I am hungry because I didn't eat lunch. That's awesome. That is awesome. It could be a merino maybe? Yes, please. <laughs> Mary Marin, if you're going to Sheep and Wool, we will share some restaurant stories. What, uh, for someone with no experience, like the chef, Joe, I loved him. Very, everything had to be big and tall, big and tall. That's too pink. I will work with it. Thank you, thank you. And he didn't hire me. The kitchen manager hired me, and then for, and he was like, I didn't hire, he made sure to let me know. I didn't hire you. And he had like clogs, and he kind of, and he had tons of like beautiful curly hair. And so I was like kind of, I was on, I was on, what's, I was like in a trial period. It was a test. <laughs> oh gosh, it's so crazy. But then he liked me. <laughs> and he taught me a lot. Okay. Alright, so the faces, oh my gosh, you guys are gonna have so much fun. Find the pretty, like find the best part of your snowball. I like a little blush on the cheeks. I'm gonna mix that with just a little bit. Well, I think I can do it. It's gonna have very rosy cheeks. I had crawfish, crayfish, craw well, I don't know what they, is there a fancier name? Whatever, if there's a fancier name, that's what we called them. And when they were plated, they held chives. <laughs> that I used to play with those in the creek growing up. I like can't handle. Chives. Ch uh, chives. <laughs> what did you say? You played with chives? No. <laughs> crayfish in the creek. I don't, I think they, I think that's like catfish for me. They kind of taste like bottom dweller. Yes. Because they're in creeks. Yeah. <laughs> prawns. Yes, prawns. Thank you. We did not call them crawfish. <laughs> but that's what they are. What else did I do? There's a lot of a lot of fanciness. All right, I'm going to mix a few little things together. I feel like the, the, the snowman looks embarrassed. Mud bugs. Okay. Yeah, there yeah, yeah. Are. Chat, it's very useful. Oh, you're, you're working on those snowballs. Yeah. You should come be on the camera. Right. Mm. I'll move into the centered spot oh, on the overhead. And you can be in the centered spot on the camera. I figured you might not want to do it.
I'm three I'm so I am you're so I'm so so happy you're doing that. I do not want to do it when I'm all done. All right, I'm lightening these cheeks up a little bit. We could reverse needle it too. See what happens. We're getting so advanced in our techniques. Even the Caesar salad was big and tall. All right, carrot nose. I'm gonna use, I have a little needle that I like to use. You could use a um, the smallest pindle. I'm sorry, reaching. You could use a toothpick. Ooh, you found me a nice orange blend. What's this? I don't know, it was a bat back there. It's purdy, but um, pumpkin works well. I think that's what this guy is. Um, um, pumpkin core or pumpkin top coat. Mm -hmm. I hope that wasn't like for a project. I'm sorry. I just figured it was there. It doesn't take a lot to get these seams out, really. No. Did anybody watch um, Afterlife? It's on Netflix. I really liked it. It's about a guy who's um, mourning the loss of his oh, I saw wife. That advertised. Yeah, you should watch it. It's good. It's he's a little like, I mean, he's kind of depressing. He's depressed, <laughs> um, but it's well done, and I like. Uh, it just deals with grief and but he's really funny so mm. i need a fine needle um to get don't, don't mind me <laughs> there we go is that zinnia someone asked if it was zinnia ah that makes sense it's so nice when people know what we're up to here <laughs> yes Yes, this is Zinnia. That's very helpful. <laughs> My friend's mom, Tammy, is on there. She said her daughter, Shelby, used to play with crayfish also in a creek growing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. And they're creepy. Yeah, they're crazy. Unless they're on your plate and they're, they're called crazy. prawns and they have <laughs> chives. chives in their claws. And Big and tall. Fancy. I wonder, I should look up. I should look up my sh chef friend. And we had a volleyball team, beach volleyball team. Oh, that was fun. Angelina didn't seem to want a super stick in this one. Yeah. All right, my carrot does it not have a nice taper, so I'm trying to make that happen there we go how have i not kicked this over yet i know i have a couple things down by my feet that's like the tuck away place that would be bad it's a lot of water <laughs> we're like what are you guys saying, what are you saying? <laughs> yeah but uh blush is romney it's a little wiry um this is a merino. Cheeky's great. Cheeky's perfect. That's why we made Cheeky. Mm-hmm. All right, your carrot nose will be a little obscene looking for a bit until it all comes together. Gentle roller did its job. Yeah. Putting just a little bit of white at the base of the nose, just as an extra holder on her. 
like a little extra fiber to stab in and you know make sure it's getting held in. What? And then how, like where you put the eyes and the smile is a huge part of the character. So have fun with that. Oh, cool. Yeah, we'll do the next. Um, so we did the um, certified instructor enrollment like September, October. Um, we had 18, 18 so, yeah. certified instructors and we'll do it again. Um, just kind of stay tuned March, March, April time. We have a lot of people. We have had inquired. a lot of inquiries so when we how's that going to work when wow. we open up enrollment it would be the first to send their application and application we fee. have a handful that have already even sent in applications um okay. yeah would be the first to get in applications but they can't do that yet right Like, I feel like the handful... If they submitted their application... Well, we had, I feel like the handful was because we had... Off. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, can't do the application yet. Until, until we, we open, open, it. open it again. Even if people have it. And if you've inquired and you have it, try to download. It does expire. For whatever reason, the envelope, as it's called, on DocuSign, does expire. Um maybe after 60 days or 90 days. So someone who already got the application, if you download it, then you have it. But if, if they haven't downloaded it, it might expire. Okay. In which point they could reach out again. Yeah. <laughs> they always look so crazy. I think I think hats and scarves are like a huge part of this project. He's cute. He is cute. <laughs> and then, you know, do you want like the coal buttons? I don't know. Maybe I want his arms towards the back. Yeah, that's a little better. Not towards, they, they go towards the back, not the front. <laughs> Otherwise they're coming. <laughs> They're like tax yeah. snowmen. <laughs> do you guys want to see me sew this on too? I'll just do it so that I have a finished little dude here. <laughs> oh my gosh, he is cracking me up. He's looking right at you. <laughs> he is with his <laughs> carrot nose coming my way. Now, this is always interesting, getting the head in a good position to, to everything else that's going on. Yeah. Do you remember the last question? Oh, let's do the last question. For the maybe mug. For the maybe mug, and if we don't have a mug, we'll be in touch. What was the shape of the first stab at Wabbit? I'm trying to think if it's in any tutorials. Um, that's a good question. I think it was might have been know. in an we early one. We never sold them on the website. We only sold them in the Etsy shop. We only sold them in the Etsy shop. They were all handmade. All handmade by you? I think so. Yeah. What's John doing? He's like sneaking around. <laughs> There's a lot of round, circle, square. It was a, do I give a hint or do I just I wait know. and see let's, if somebody gets it? Let's see what people say. No hints. No hints. No 
Oh, okay. Because I'm stitching around this way. He's going to end up a little like... <laughs> it's okay. It's okay, dude. He's got a little bald spot in back. A little snowball shortage. Got cracking noise. Mm -hmm. Should I say... Well, we have some rabbit guesses, which is not, it's not a bad idea that it was not a rabbit. And you all thought you were a super fan. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find a picture. Yeah, to see I, I think I have a picture somewhere. I, I, can I give a hint yet? Like, we must have a picture somewhere because... Oh my gosh, my snowman is so happy. <laughs> it's like, I'm so happy. Thank you for making me today. Okay, my hint is it had two pointy pointinesses. <laughs> pointinesses, but it wasn't a rabbit. <laughs> That's like everything. <laughs> It had two pointinesses. <laughs> That's like a reverse hint. <laughs> okay, my next oh, hint is... Okay. Oh. oh. Audrey Farthing. What, I'm curious if that was a guess or if you like knew it or figured it out or. So it was an owl. And it was very clever, really, it because it had. I have it. What's that? I do have it. Because it had like a stab at shape. But it had two ears, and so you could use the two ears like mini stabbits. Um, like. Is there any way to show it? Right, oh, in the overhead. It, I'll try to put it in the overhead. There he is. It's, it's it had all owl like, eyes. It had owl <laughs> eyes that were all fringed out. <laughs> it's cute. Yes. There you go. Yeah, it looks it looks good on the. Oh, I just said that it was the pointy clue. <laughs> the pointy. Oh, I'm gonna tell John that because he <laughs> thought my clue was bunk. All right, I think I've gone around like one and a half times. <laughs> so I hope you guys have fun with this I hope you had fun today I hope you have fun with uh, little little embellishments for them I know you will I know you'll have lots of good ideas why was the snowman kicked out of the grocery store because he melted they caught him picking his nose <laughs> I like that one. I like it. You need a new nose? <sighs> Can you close the overhead window? Oh, Are you able? No? I don't. I don't okay. I, Do you know how? I do. It's okay. I'm not messing with John's setup. Do you mind closing the overhead window? Yeah. Just one second. Thank you. Hmm. 
<laughs> What's that? My carrot's funny. <laughs> A close up of the moose. Oh, yeah. Yes, I bet Good you one. would. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's not ready yet. I don't actually. Oh, the one that's that here. Oh, that's fine. Someone's working on their moose, trying to figure out the antlers. Okay, but this is not the moose. This was um, a workshop moose, and I, I and I just asked John to turn off the overhead camera, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hold him up close. Um, this. Okay. So I have bettered the the whole project. I I feel um, got it a little bit better. Let me go to your left a little bit. Okay. Um, the process is of course like basically still the same, but got the shapes a little bit better. Um, but the new one, mostly in the face, I feel like I got the face a lot more characteristic. Um, <clears throat> but the new one isn't isn't finished yet. People do so. want news. This is kind of news because this is news is... because this is what I'm working on now. Um, I'm working on the content for the course, mm -hmm. and and then we'll have to we'll we'll film. Um, Next university. Yes, I would think maybe my right side is never as good. All right, that's fine, John. That's good. Somebody What's asked up? for that. Oh, okay. Sorry, John. <laughs> Uh, what's her name again? <laughs> um, doctor. She's a doctor. Doctor White Wool. No. Doctor White Wool. No, might... no. We'll have to find that. She's in a video. She's in a fiber fairy. Um, and she's awesome. I do like her a lot. She has. Pointy elf shoe boots with a pearl on each toe. She has a hoop skirt with pearl embellishments. She has um, lock cuffs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had fun with this one. Uh, a she vest. Has, she has that awesome streak in her hair. A vest with fur trim. I love her uh, skin. She has mohair hair, which needs to be brushed. And it was meant to be kind of crazy. Like mm -hmm. it was meant to be sticking up. Um, but I'm like I'm like a little kid. Like when I was little, did you did you guys like cut your Barbie's hair? Like I have a lot of fun with that part of, <laughs> of like putting hair on and then and then styling it. Like none of my Barbies had the blonde, beautiful hair. By the time I was done with them, they all had pixies. <laughs> Oh, they all, yeah. well, they weren't growing it back. And she has this elf um, hat with little pearls. And she was made, she's friends with the Fiber Fairy, and she was made um, for a Fiber Fairy. What's Someone asked for that at the okay. very, very beginning. Okay. Which, let me get this. I have forgotten. Sorry. One, one of us is going to knock over the water before it's all over. All right, we're showing the zebra, which if you didn't see the um, the 2D live, that was a lot of fun for mm -hmm. me. And I would like to do that more. And we showed a lot of technique. Um, we had other artists art here to talk about. And um, yeah, was there any specific question about the zebra? <clears throat> I had just asked to see it up close. Terry, if you didn't see the 2D um, discussion, I would definitely go back and watch that. Yeah. It's on the channel. Yeah. Um, on oh, the, the channel. Hair. Sorry, the hair That's on it. the easel. Someone else asked about that as okay. well. Okay. On the channel, um, you can find the playlists, and one of the playlists is... L Felt alongs, felt alongs or live 
live streams or a uh, question about that being a, a supply pack yes. and tutorial. The goal with the hair is to be a supply pack and tutorial. Um, it actually is going to be slightly different, slightly different because I'm still, um, I'm still working, working out the details. Um, yeah. Have not quite recaptured the magic of the first piece that I did like this. So that's kind of why I'm, I'm still tweaking it. I, I like to be, you know, to feel like what I'm sharing is <laughs> I'm super inspired by it and excited about. So this is fun. Um, another rabbit, much to Jennifer's dismay. Um, we try to name things so that we don't accidentally pick up the wrong hair rabbit bunny. That This would make six. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> but somehow they just are a nice, uh, nice creature to focus on, so. Mm. We'll have to go through and make sure that the TV discussion is linked. Oh. Well, I'm not sure which playlist it is linked on. Oh, okay. Do you remember, John? Um. To the critique. Uh, it is listed just in our videos. Yeah, I, I, okay. I don't think the live like maybe we should have a separate playlist for it. Yes. I, I think maybe they automatically are like past live streams, but Right. Gotcha. Yeah, like yeah, live streams. Definitely, definitely on the channel. I think, you know, so Fiber Fairy Day is kind of one live category. Felt along or live tutorial is another category. Mm -hmm. And then live sort of discussion or um is a third category. So we'll figure that out and get the um, get the stuff better better organized. As far as timing on the 2D hair, that is a <clears throat> great question. That's a good question because I'm working on the mousse and then I threw two <laughs> two fiber fairy projects into development. Oh right. Yeah. Cause we have to start getting ready for them big fiber fairy now um so you'll hear more about that mm -hmm. a little down the road but i'm very excited good stuff coming yes good stuff coming either way anyway always <laughs> anything else this was fun yeah. You guys got to see uh, the gentle roller. Who needs a name? She won't have an Italian name. We were talking about Pippa mm -hmm. or Piper, which is kind of cool because she has a lot of pipe parts. <laughs> <laughs> and she was a little noisy the other day when you were telling her to pipe down. Piper, Piper is nicer than like tuba. <laughs> Oh, this guy is looking a little off kilter. So, um, yes, thank you so much for being here. I had a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see the snowmen, and I can't wait to see you guys again. Right now, 2-22-2022 is our next scheduled live, but if something comes up before then, we'll... Um, you will hear about it and I hope you guys like the t-shirts I'm really happy with them and excited about them and I think that's it what Rolanda Rolanda <laughs> that's great <laughs> uh oh that that's in the running mm. that's good so funny <laughs> so Thank you and stay warm and healthy and have fun felting. And thank you for being a part of all of this for us. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.